Hello and welcome back to the channel, my name is Crashy, and today I want to do a very chill commentary style video discussing predecessors monetization and the business model going forward, kind of some of my thoughts about what we know about the business model and the current form of monetization versus what I think it should be, what I think it will be, and what I'm ultimately comfortable slash hoping for going into the future of the game. So very chill video, make sure you drop a like and are subscribed to the channel for future predecessors content i would love to hear your comments in the comment section down below or read your comments in the comment section down below on monetization and what you expect and what you're hoping for um, but i have a little bit of bullet points in front of me and i want to go ahead and talk about it so first and foremost i want to talk about paid early access um, you know the very first barrier for entry monetization that the game has to offer with the bundles to pay for early access now for some reason i actually think that this was a very important talking point because when you're in the game i think it's really Really, really easy to forget that you didn't just pay to play the game but you actually paid for the bundle and what the bundle actually gives you so uh, I'm gonna be honest I don't have the bundles in front of me right away but I know about what they offer, right? They have the various different levels of skins, depending on which bundle you got, the varying amount of platinum, which is the paid premium currency that you get from the bundles, depending on which bundle size you got. And then, of course, it comes with uh, some of the like, cosmetic stuff, like the... Um, the little profile bit like picture uh, you know little bitty things like that uh, i know it comes with like a discord supporter role and, and so just like little tiny extra add-ins but the biggest thing that the bundle gives you are the early access heroes now i'm gonna be honest i'm not exactly sure where that commitment ends um i, I would assume that it's for all of early access um so as long as the game is literally branded early access before going either like full release or free to play um so you know we're looking at like 25 heroes or so minimum i think um I, I don't really know but a pretty good amount of heroes that you're actually uh, purchasing for these bundles and now correct me if i'm wrong but the bundles are anywhere between 20 dollars and 80 dollars, depending on like i said which bundle that you get um which also has like i said most of its value coming from the platinum especially if you're looking at the bigger bundles now i bought my bundle or well i got one of my bundles on sale for the 50 percent off cost so i think i spent like ten dollars on it and then um um, luckily for me, big shout outs to Ometa Studios, they were able to uh, actually give me one of the legendary bundles. Um, so I really do appreciate that for being a part of their creator guild. But that aside, I do want to make note of the initial monetization that is the bundles because I think that it has a lot of like hints and nods to the future, or at least that's the way I'm kind of reading into it. Um, that's going to be really important for us to talk about in just a little bit. So those are the bundles. That's what I think about them. I think that just to play the game, um, the bundles are worth it if you're at minimum looking at the $20 cost to play at early access, but also what it gives you. It gives you quite a bit of content. Um, exclusive skins that I assume will probably never come back because that's usually how that works, right? Early access skins that will never come back and, um, you know, a bunch of heroes and um, the ability to play the game early with some other little goodies. So, yeah. All right. Old content, old Paragon content. Uh, this one, I think, will probably be the biggest divisive talking point for this video because, you know, we talked a little bit about it on my stream recently, but as someone who never played Paragon, all of the content is new to me. And while, yes, the content did exist in an old game, you didn't really buy it in that game and now have to rebuy it in this game. Like, Predecessor is still very much so its own game, and so I think that them using the older skins and recreating those skins, because I, I gotta be honest, this is where my ignorance as just a player and a user of software shines. I don't know what kind of work it takes for them to recreate those skins in Predecessor. I'm very much so secure in the thought that it's not just a copy-paste drop the skin in the game kind of a situation. Um, they, they do work on those skins, right? They, they have to put in work to make sure that those skins um, can work in Predecessor, they feel good, look good, etc. And I think that they should be compensated for that work. So, in my mind, when talking about monetization, I think it's very fair and important for us to bring up the old content and talk about how that content should be implemented and, and should it have a cost and should it be super cheap because it's old content or should it be free and, um, you know, really, really short talking point for me. I think the old content has value because it looks good. I think the old content requires work in order for it to function and feel good and look good inside a predecessor. And I think that Ometa Studios should be compensated for the work that they do. Um, so just because you've seen the skin before, or just because you had the skin before, or just because it's, like I said, older content, um, in my opinion, does not remove the value that the content has. And 
therefore I think that it should be paid for. So that's my particular talking point on older content and I think how it could tie into the business model of predecessor and the monetization of predecessor. Now, a big thing with predecessor that is already confirmed and we can speak on is yes, the game will be free to play. So really important for us to talk about the bundles to pay um, to get in for early access and all of the goodies that the bundles do come with. But yes, the game's business model will be free to play. Um, and you know, that's just a piece of the business model, right? Because obviously we don't know the entirety of how they plan to monetize, but there's a little bit of room for speculation and that's what we're looking to do here. So with the free to play title you oftentimes get what would be a premium currency we have that platinum and what could be a free-to-play currency now there may be a very specific reason why we don't have that in the game it's because the game is not free to play and you know maybe they just don't want to give that or show that um, just yet or make any commitments to a particular business model or um, you know Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a scale for the business model, right? Like X amount of time or X amount of games experience equals X amount of, or you know, Y amount of currency. Um, but I do firmly believe, and this is where we start talking about heroes and hero cost and things of that nature. I do believe that the most elegant um, kind of business model that I've seen for most MOBAs, or just a tried and true kind of business model, because I'm not sure if it's the best, but is to have a premium currency and a free to play currency. And I think it's a very simple, like I said, elegant kind of um, business model to have for a free to play title. So again, we do know that the game is going to be free to play. Um, and that begs the question, do the heroes have a cost, right? Um, you can relate this back to Paragon if you want. I forget whether or not the heroes had a cost. Um, and you can relate this to other MOBAs. For example, Dota 2, the heroes are free. Um, League of Legends, most other MOBAs that I've played, the heroes have a individual cost. So in my mind, personally, I think the best and most elegant solution would be to have a free to play currency that you earn, you know, slowly and is, you know, rather expensive usually for most heroes because, um, you know, you want them to earn money and you want them to um, entice the users and the players to spend money in order to get their unlocks. Um, that is, you know, fair and hopefully a decent like scale for players to earn heroes for free while also being able to expedite that process with premium paid currency that is platinum. So that's my thoughts on it, right? I, I do think that we could have, and let's make up a name for it. Let's call it shards or crystals, right? Um, you know, if you pay money, you get platinum. If you play the game, earn experience. If you spend time in the game, you would earn shards or crystals or something like that right and so let's say hypothetically um you know a hero's cost let's say gideon cost um you know i, I can't even think right now because i'm trying to think of good pricing but let's just hypothetically say gideon costs a thousand platinum and he's you know ten thousand shards right you know it's something like that is about how it would sound or look for that free-to-play currency versus premium paid currency um so Platinum and its usage, right? Like how do we, this is a bullet point that I have written down. Uh, what all can platinum buy us? Well, essentially, I think it should be able to buy you anything, right? Um, and for what it's worth, I think that if there is a free to play currency, that should also pretty much allow you to buy anything. Um, that's the beauty of it, right? Like you have the potential to grind the game essentially infinitely to earn you know, free to play currency in order to purchase the things that you want to purchase, whether that be cosmetic or, you know, in game heroes. Um, but it's ultimately up to you as long as you're aware that you will never really get everything for free because the scale is like tipped against you, right? The scales are tipped against you. You're not really going to be able to grind as much so fast because if you would, then they wouldn't make any money. They would have everybody free to play grinding the game and making no money. So essentially the scales are tipped in the favor of platinum because we want people spending money on the game. But at the same time, you do want a healthy free to play player base and you do want a healthy amount of people that are willing to grind the game. So it's all about finding that balance and making the business model feel like, okay, the prices for premium currency aren't ridiculously expensive, you know, i.e. spending $60 on a skin or something like that, um, or, or you know, you know, $30 on a single hero or something crazy like that. But at the same time, so you want those prices to be fair, but at the same time, you also want the free to play 
version of that to be within a reasonable amount of reach, right? You don't want someone that can play two hours and then unlock multiple heroes, but you don't want someone that needs to play multiple months to unlock one hero either, if that makes sense. So it's all about finding that mutual benefit. And I think when talking about the business model and monetization of games, it all comes down to what are we all here for and what do we all want? Well, we they're making a cool game for us to enjoy and we're here to play it and enjoy it. So what do we want? We want longevity. We want a good, healthy, communicative, like mutual benefiting relationship. So player to developer, player to monetization. We want it to make sense for both of us. We want it to be mutually beneficial. We don't want one being a parasite to the other, if that makes sense. So we've talked about platinum and its usage. We've talked about free to play currency. What other kinds of things can they monetize? Well, I think there's plenty of things that they can monetize small things and every game has this, right? Um, small cosmetics, small little flares and sprays and banners. And I think Paragon had death banners, something like that. All of these things are small little things that they can throw in the shop emotes, things that they can throw into maybe a battle pass. So I'd love to beg the question or ask the question, um, battle passes, what do you think about them? Because personally for me, I think that I have seen in the industry really, really good mutually benefiting for the company and for, for the developers and for the players, great battle passes. And I've seen some pretty ridiculous battle passes, battle passes that don't really have a lot of substance in them, have a lot of lazy content in it, or just a lot of filler content, right? Like, oh, trial license or trial this, or, you know, a little ugly little icon, like little terrible things in the battle pass. So I think a good battle pass could be very very beneficial um, if implemented correctly, right? If not um, a little bit gross, because I have seen some battle pad, bad battle passes in my day, but you know, that's definitely something that they could implement into the game for additional monetization, something to give the players to uh, grind, which gives nice retention, I'm sure, as well as, you know, like I said, the financial side of the game while also giving the players hopefully good value. If the battle pass is done right, hopefully good value. So those are my thoughts on monetization. I think that pretty much covers it. I do very much so think that every hero that is in the game, this is this is me talking back to bundles because I do want to touch on this point. I do think that every hero in the game is going to have a cost. And I think that people have, because we're so used to the current state of the game and just playing it every day, I think that people have forgotten or maybe haven't really considered that the bundles that we've paid for are a very good value because in the future, all of these heroes may be associated with the cost and that not all of these 25, 20 plus original heroes, and I say original, not like original to Paragon, um, but a, or a predecessor, I mean original as in like the original cast of predecessor are not necessarily going to be free. And I would highly consider that. And that's why I have three accounts myself, um, because the bundles, in my opinion, are probably some of the best deals that we're going to get on Predecessor, maybe in the history of Predecessor. And so if you're someone on the fence about buying into the game, I would recommend it because they technically haven't confirmed their full plans for monetization and their business model. But I think that if you look at the history of MOBAs and if you look at some of these tried and true monetization um setups, can't think of a better word right now, um, then you may be able to pay attention and see about what they might look to do with it. And, and that's where I'm at personally. I think that I kind of understand how they might do monetization. I kind of understand what kind of monetization works, and it wouldn't surprise me to see them go with a free-to-play and premium currency kind of split. And you know what? We give our feedback whenever that does happen, if and when that does happen, to you know hopefully get mutually benefiting um, prices and content and monetization. So, friends, thank you so much for listening. I definitely appreciate it. Like I said, drop a like on the video and subscribe for future predecessor content. As always, be sure to kind of want to like, plus, I'm you love them, and I'll see you in the next video.